But open telemetry and testing. Uh, this is where we're going to talk about for the next maybe five minutes or so. So first thing, if you don't know already, open telemetry, what is it? Well, first off, it's it's a project in the CNCF. It's been around for a while. It came from the confluence of a couple of a uh, combination of two different projects, open census and open tracing, uh, that were already good ideas to begin with. But then it came to uh, the the point where it's like, why isn't this you know in, in a consistent set of APIs and SDKs? And we need to get together about that. So that really started happening a couple of years ago, and now it's an official, not just a you know a good idea, but it's actually a uh, getting to the point where it will be a graduated project um, sooner rather than later in the CNCF, right? It's, it's making leaps and strides. There's already people already using it, right? And so this project, Open Telemetry, which is short, you know, we can call, call it OTEL for short, uh, is an open source observability framework made up of a collection of tools, APIs, and SDKs. Okay, that could describe a lot of things. On the other hand, uh, it, it is essentially the vendor agnostic way to connect what you what you need to know about in your code, right? So what are the metrics? What are the traces? What's going on in your code and the logs for that matter uh, to be emitted from your code from various different systems into a vendor agnostic model that then you can connect to whatever your backend of choice is. And by backend, I usually mean like, they call them observability platforms, maybe they're APMs, who knows, but they're, they're ways to actually utilize that data. And so this is a very good idea because then you're not embedding vendor specific SDKs and APIs in your code just to get meaningful information out of your system, right? There's also a couple of really cool things that have been contributed over the past year or so. Uh, related to auto instrumentation. So even though it might not be something you have to rewrite your code for, maybe it's something that you layer in as a side core or you, you have a pass through of some kind of binary that, you know, in your deployment, that it'll actually auto instrument what it can from known frameworks like obviously like Node and things like Java and, and whatnot. There's stuff already out there to to start getting some more information, better information from your systems. And oh, by the way, those APM solutions that you probably already have in place in your enterprises and stuff, those things not only can, in most cases, can receive open telemetry data, but they can also in some times um, have ex uh, emit some of that information in a more vendor neutral way as well. So, now that we know open telemetry is all about logs, traces, and spans in a vendor neutral way, what the heck is a span and why is this super important for the next couple of minutes? A span is essentially that building block that makes sure that there are that timed operations that represent a piece of a workflow in a distributed system. So you can think about this like, you know, request from the front end on a web application goes to the back end, the back end code actually calls another piece of code, which calls another piece of code or another distributed system or a third party, right? As those calls are going along, it's really important to have tracing information so that when it comes back, maybe you also include some baggage data or some additional metadata from a subservice, not available at this time, come back later kind of situation. You now have better information up at the top to figure out what's going on. So this, this concept of span, that's just one implementation of that can be used for a lot of things. And actually, as it turns out, that's where we get to how it applies to testing, right? The, the too long didn't read about this slide is that you can get better insights as to why your test failed. So remember when I said, when you press that button and it just fails, wouldn't it be nice to actually be able to hand let's say if you're a test engineer, to be able to hand back information about why the test button failed, it was this service way down here that was causing problems rather than trying to fish that out of logs and stuff like that. So a proper implementation of open telemetry, especially when it relates to testing, right, will connect the logical UI test steps with the back end service calls. And that's what you see on the right here, an example from uh, Cypress tests running uh, with open telemetry. Um, speaking of Olifest, we already have uh, one of the speakers talking specifically about testing and open telemetry together, this exact same thing. Um, Mike, Michael Haberman um, of Aspecto, uh, and they've got something called Malabi, which I think is, is a little framework that they've got to do similar things to this. Right. So at the end of the day, wouldn't it be nice 
when you see that your test, the high level test executed, which test was it? And what was it doing? It was going along and actually clicking these things. And then, oh, by the way, at the very bottom, even past the point where you're talking about UI steps like get and click. Well, now all of a sudden the click causes a front end call to make a back end call. And that back end call is doing even more back end calls down to the database. And if the database insert fails, then you can see that in your trace. How crazy cool is that, right? So in my line of work, I said, I work with uh, Tricetus and I am the head of the incubation engineering uh, group. One of the things we're looking at is how to uh, layer in open telemetry or OTEL, remember OTEL, um, with both NeoLoad for the performance and load testing solution, but also with Testum, recent acquisition of Tricenis, Testum, the uh, testing platform, uh, to be able to actually provide some of this instrumentation into your vendor agnostic backend so you can visualize it how you want. Right? If you've got a fancy paid for service, fine. If you need some open source components like Jaeger or Prometheus or whatever, like you can use those too, it's up to you. Uh, and the big thing for me, especially as a performance engineer, is that you're connecting the, the, the outside, the red, the rate error and duration signals with the server side, the backend utilization, saturation and error signals. And by the way, this link will get you to the deck, which will also get to you to all these links. So if you, you know, as it looks like a link, it's a deep link into something else. So way to get started, very quick, go to OpenTelemetry.io and just kind of read up a little bit. They've got a lot of great documentation. Um, secondly, attend Olifest. Right? It's, a, it's a great community. We're gonna do a lot of really great things. It's in between, it's four hours for four days. You can either watch the some of the recordings before the actual event, you can watch them afterwards, but most, most importantly, you can engage with people in the community as on those days. And so you can ask questions, you can learn about stuff, um, and there are gonna be workshops from a bunch of people, um, as you can see on the, uh, the right. There's also, um, Jess Kerr uh, has been doing a lot of really good uh, summary and tutorials around open, uh, uh, open telemetry and observability. So there's a link to that, Jessitron is, uh, is the handle. And I do have uh, an observability primer that goes into a little bit of the history and why it's important and some other aspects of this that we've kind of covered really briefly here. Um, that's also linked to from the deck as well.